Hey CFS Warriors, it's Victoria coming to you from Maui and enjoying a sunset here. It's really nice. And I just want to talk to you tonight about what is your story? You know, when I was first diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome after four years of the push and crash cycle that had left me just nearly bed bound, house bound, you know, lost my life basically, I was told that there was nothing that the medical community could do for me. And I had a choice at that point to decide whether I was going to believe that or make a decision to chart my own path. And you know, the reason why this came up for me today is I saw a comment on my CFS Warriors page where someone had said, people can't recover. You know, uh, there's only like a so many percentage of remission. And you know, the thing is, that's going to be the reality of that person, which is sad. They have chosen to put their belief in the medical system. The guy in the white coat has got a lot of power, okay, in people's lives. And if we take those words that someone says because of their degree, their qualifications, and say, this is what they say about my life, then we are really a victim of their words. And so, you know, I just want to have you contemplate a bit about what story are you playing out in your mind about your recovery. Yes, it is challenging. I know that I knew that it was challenging when I was going through it. I didn't know if I would ever get my life back. And I really have gotten so much life back. And I just want to encourage you to think about that. It's the thoughts and the belief that we have is going to make a determination about our future. You know, I know that when my son was diagnosed with a life-threatening illness, that was really scary for me when he was very young. And I had a choice at that point to either believe that what the doctors were saying was true about him or what I believed from Scripture was true about him. It's that there was healing for him and that this was not his destiny to be a victim of an illness. And so basically, I remember doing some research and finding some obscure doctor in the Midwest that had found this particular disease that my son was diagnosed with that he termed benign and that it was only in certain cases where it would not show up as fatal or life threatening. And I decided that's the one that we want. We've got the benign um, situation here, not the life-threatening. And I really believe that that made, that decision made a difference in the direction that everything took from that point. Now, yes, we did everything that we could as far as diet, and um, we actually were led not to do all the medication that Stanford was asking us to do at the time. Um, we were taking a different course, and it was scary, but our belief was that our son was going to be well, that this was not going to be a lifetime situation. And, you know, that's how it's turned out. He actually, his blood levels normalized several years later, and uh, we discovered that what you choose to believe is what will actually come to pass. And so if you're going to choose to believe that CFS is what all the medical people say, that, oh, there's no cure and there's no way out of this, you can only live with it and cope with it, well, that will be your lot, sadly. And there is a lot of people in that parking lot, and that's it. They're stuck. There's no way out of that. But if you can look at it, look at the possibilities and think, you know what? People have recovered from things like cancer and other things. It is documented. They call it, you know, radical remission, just spontaneous remission. Well, wouldn't you like that? Well, why don't you choose? That's what I'm going to have. I'm going to have recovery from CFS like I've seen other people online that are sharing their stories. I know for me, People like Toby Morrison were a huge inspiration for me when I was really sick. Alex Howard, Rhea Bartlett Quinn, others that I sought out people that were not in the mainstream medical, but they were saying, you know what? I dodged it. I was told I would never recover, but this is what I did and I've gotten better. And like Tony Robbins says, and I've always applied this to recovery, if you want to be successful in something, 
Uh, find someone who's done what you want to do and then do what they did. Makes sense, right? So if you want to recover, find people that have recovered from CFS and learn as much as you can from them. Be a student of recovery. So basically, tonight's just about what's your story. And don't choose a story that doesn't serve you. Choose a story that will serve you and will serve the rest of your life. You know, I sit here in Maui with palm trees behind me and a sunset, and this was a distant dream for me. I'm here on my own on a health, a self-directed health retreat, and, you know, I would have thought that this would never have been possible given the way that I was feeling, given the illness and how it impacted my life. But by the actions that I took and the beliefs that I tenaciously held on to, and by the grace of God, especially, and by his direction, here I am, living life and sharing with you. So please choose your beliefs very carefully. Be aware of what you're thinking during the day and choose to bring those thoughts into submission to the all-powerful story that you can recover from chronic fatigue syndrome and you can get your life back. So warriors love you, and remember, life's not over, it's starting again, and I speak life, health, and wholeness over you.